music for a little bit. When the music stops, then we will be live. Okay. <laughs> Hey you dorks, this is Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you are listening to The Dorkening. Hi, I'm Brian Johnson, and although you probably accidentally stumbled across it and have no idea why you're watching it, you are in fact watching The Dorkening. Hello, this is Tom Kenny, voice actor, uh, the voice of the Ice King on Adventure Time, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah, meow. Oh, Gary the Snail, too. Hey, guess what you're filling your eye holes and ear holes with? The Dorkening! Oh, I love the Dorkening. Very popular in Ooh. And Bikini Bottom. Okay. Hi, I'm Lou Ferrigno. You're watching The Dorkening. And you know what? You don't like me when I get angry, so don't get me angry. You better keep watching The Dorkening. Hey, guys. This is Felissa Rose, and you're watching The Dorkening. Hey, guys. It's Courtney Palm. We're shooting Death House, and you're watching The Dorkening. Testing, testing. One, two, three. This is Anthony Michael Hall, and you're watching The Dorkening. Stay tuned, my friend's going to show you what entertainment's all about, baby. Testing, testing, can you hear me? The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest testing. flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, ah! it's scary.
what sunday we're doing a live show this is going to be an awesome we one we had to come on special just for this amazing guest uh you know and that testing you kept on here and that was drew checking out his camera <laughs> uh speaking of that drew how's it going hey everybody glad to be here hope i don't die <laughs> uh chris how's it going my friend hey what's up chris uh would you like uh to introduce our most awesome guest yes from the suicide squad books behind me wherever my thumb happens to be pointing we have john ostrander the writer of the uh 66 run of the suicide squad on the show with us thank you for coming on the show with us john well it's my pleasure now i have a question for you guys yeah uh since I'm the guest, am I responsible for the mature content? Oh, uh, Chris didn't tell you? No. <laughs> uh, no yeah, halfway you should, tell uh, me I'm not doing the nudity. You don't want me doing it. No. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Drew will handle that. So, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, now we can't hear you, Drew. You're muted. Uh, let me unmute. You scared him off. <laughs> Uh, while uh, Drew uh, figures that off, we'll toss it over to you, Chris, if you want to kick us off. Yes, John, uh, thank you so much for coming on Splash Pages to talk about your amazing run on Suicide Squad, as well as you know anything else that you have uh, written in the Pantheon of comic books. Uh, mm -hmm. We really do appreciate it. My pleasure. One thing I've always wondered, and I've just, uh, I last year during the pandemic, I actually uh, track down every single issue of your original run and completed it, which was fantastic. And I've been reading it since uh, the beginning of it all. Um, and w one of the things I was really curious about was, was DC uh, editorial or, or publish, you know, whoever was in charge of it, um, telling you who you who you could and could not kill off of the Suicide Squad? Or did you have carte blanche to murder anyone you wanted to? Uh, basically, with very few exceptions, I, I had carte blanche because that was one of the rules uh, and one of the reasons to take uh, C and D list characters was so that I could control them, that I could reinvent them, I could uh, redefine who their characters were, I could take them wherever I wanted. Uh, if I wanted to, de to detach a limb, I could. And if I wanted to kill them off, I could. Um, that was necessary to the very concept of the book. And basically, I was there to clean house uh, for, uh, for DC. Don't forget, this was short, not long after Crisis on Infinite Earths and then Legends, which brought me to DC. But um, the basic idea was, uh, hi, we're the new DC. We're wide open. We're not your father's DC. And we're going to do outer things. Um, with Suicide Squad, part of the premise and part of the pitch to begin with is that A, characters will die on the missions. Not all of them, but, but some will die. Not Maybe not every issue, but it will happen often enough uh, to validate the name. And secondly, when they're dead, they're dead. They don't come back with one exception. I kept to that rule. Wow. Um, did you want to follow up on that or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, were, I mean, how much was in the back of your head the knowledge of the DC pantheon of uh, characters? Because I know the who's who had just come out prior to the Suicide Squad launching, and it came out like as uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths was getting going, then Crisis happened, then after Crisis, mm -hmm. it was happening. Was, was that your Bible for it, or did you really know who all these uh, obscure characters were inside and out? I knew who a lot of them were, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time, it, it was uh, Who's Who was my go-to. Uh, I would flip through the pages, see who looked interesting. It's how Deadshot wound up in the, uh, in the squad. There was only a half page for him and one and one illustration. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. That's that, my that's guy. That, that's the and, uh, and uh I thought yeah, he had only a very slight bit of background, but what I saw I found interesting. <laughs> and uh Okay, Chris, I, now you're I, showing off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh uh and he had a really cool costume. It's a costume that uh that a 
that attracted me was that Marshall Rogers had redesigned for mm. for a story that he and Steve Englehart had told. Uh, I think it was in Detective, although it may have been in Batman. But uh, I thought that the costume looked cool. Uh, there's some cool things about him, but lots of room for me to add more things about him, such as um, he, he's supposed to be a stone cold, cold killer. Uh, I had seen on TV an interview that somebody did with an actual hitman, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and it was scary. The guy, he had the deadest eyes of anyone I've seen live or or on TV or, or anywhere, you know? And his basic feeling was, I don't care if I live or die, why should I care if you live or die? And I could take that and use that for Deadshot. He didn't have a death wish, as far as I'm concerned, but he didn't care. He didn't care if he died. So uh, so that made him very, very dangerous, I felt. That's I just felt everybody was wearing glasses and I felt like the odd man out. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, and I just, I don't have the... I don't, I don't have the energy to go get my real glasses so I can be part of the 16 eyes club. So I just grabbed the first thing I had. So yeah. They look so, no, you, you, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I have expected that you guys thought that when I couldn't come in the chat that I got selected for termination so quickly in the movie, you know, like the movie yeah. I just watched, but nope, still here, still alive. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. So, so you, get us, where you can get them. Hey. So, Mr. Ostrander, I do have one question. Um, we're seeing more of the trend of, of comics being adapted into movies. Um, you know, you helped write the, like, essentially what was the first arc of the Suicide Squad, or at least one of the earliest ones. You know, you guys weren't thinking about that back in the day. You were just thinking like, hi, I'm, this is my job. I'm writing these characters. I hope the check comes in the mail. Um, how does it feel no, when you see the characters on the big screen, much less that you were asked to be in the movie? Mm. Yeah, it's like seeing your children leave the house and go out and they don't tell you where they're going and um, they get a job and they maybe they write back. So usually they don't. And uh, so it's my kids that have gone out into the world and are um, playing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. John, most of your career has been at DC Comics. Um, is there any particular reason why you stuck with DC so uh, for for so many projects? I mean, you did do some stuff for Dark Horse and Marvel as well, but DC seems to be your home. Um, I did well. I did work uh, for Valiant. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, in fact, I was doing it so much for DC that both DC and Marvel, the guys there, thought I was on exclusive contract, which I wasn't. I just went where the work was, you know, and I was mm -hmm. getting a lot of work and it got to the point. At one point, uh, I could do three or four books a month. There was one month, maybe two, where I did like six and that was way too much. Yeah, but, I yeah. saw that on uh, I saw that on the uh, comic, uh, you know, IMDb, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, uh, in fact, uh, there's one point where an editor called me up and told me that he'd been left, it was um, one of my favorite editors, he'd been left hanging. He called me on Friday about noon and he needed the script by Monday, you know? And so from starting from a flat, nothing. I mean, I knew the book, I knew the characters. So I hit him with what we call, um, uh, well, anyways, uh, five ideas real quick you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, a couple sentences for each one. He told me which one he liked. We sort of hacked out the general plot points. And then I went off and I wrote the entire script in one weekend and he had it by Monday about afternoon. That's wow. about the shortest turnaround that, that I ever wow. did. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, the number of characters that, I mean, not just in the Suicide Squad alone, which was a rotating cast of who's who, I mean, all the other books that you, you, you've you done as well, it was like, it, it was all, you know, it all kind of really blew up in the heyday of like the post-crisis on Infinite Earths. That must have been an amazing time at DC, because it seemed like everyone at writing at DC could get away with whatever they wanted to do just to beat Marvel. Yeah, yeah, well, basically, again, like I said, they were trying to... Uh, promulgate the idea that 
okay, we're not in your father's DC. We are uh, doing new things. We're taking characters that you know and exploding them. Um, that's why you had the death of Superman. You have the crippling of Batman. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Flash was uh, uh, didn't come out of uh, uh, Barry Allen. Supposedly didn't survive. Uh, crisis, so he, so he had a new flash. They kept him dead for 30 years. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. So uh, so Wally West took over. So, yeah, yeah, the idea is this is a good time to come on board with DC because you aren't going to be hampered by all the continuity uh, of it. Um, there was one point a couple of years earlier where um, they talked to me about doing a, a Superman fill-in and um, part of my plot hinged on the fact that, for some reason, I decided that uh, Clark Kent's favorite meal was was meatloaf. You know, he's he comes from the Midwest. You know, so, something good, simple, staple. And they said, no, no, he likes beef bourguignon. And I went, that doesn't sound like Clark. That doesn't sound like a sign of the Midwest. There, mm -hmm. so but uh, so that's that story never got off the ground. But now they weren't hampered <clears throat> by the cont continuity. I knew the continuity, I respected mm -hmm. the continuity whenever I could, but I didn't feel bound every uh, every dot on the eyes, every crossing on the T's. You know, I didn't have to do that all the time. So uh, if 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 keeping to the continuity further the story, great. If it didn't, forget about it. And I had the freedom to do that. Not only here, but also uh, we really pushed the limit uh, on that uh, with Wasteland. Mm. Yeah, where we, uh, you know, uh, my gold, the editor had said that um, if we're really successful with this, we will alienate. Um, a majority of our readership by the 12th issue. Okay. I guess we failed because we lasted for 16 issues. <laughs> where, where was, um, in, in an, it wasn't really till the 90s that the over sexification of women became just out of control mm -hmm. uh, in comics. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the 80s, it was starting little pieces here and there of like super hot, bodacious, supermodel looking women in comic books were being drawn. Where did it come from to not do that with uh, Amanda Waller and make her a, you know, in her 50s, overweight black woman? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we needed a, a strong leader for the for the Suicide Squad to begin with. Mm -hmm. Someone who is going to be running the show. Um, and I decided that uh, uh, on my own that I wanted it to be female. I wanted her to be black and I wanted her to be middle aged. I wanted her to be large. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the largest for me also uh, denoted heft. You know, uh, she didn't have superpowers. That's the other thing. No superpowers, only her will. And to me, you know, backed you know, her will backed by that body shape would also make her impressive. But I wanted that because there was no one like that in comics. Right. And I felt there was times that, that there was. And yeah, okay, maybe that's some of my own libtard sideness but uh 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 no i'm proud of it because uh out of, she's a character who's lasted beyond the few years in the 80s when she first showed up you know mm -hmm. you know she's being played by viola davis you know mm -hmm. that's that's pretty damn good Oh, yeah. totally. uh, as much as I love Viola Davis, I, I, I the 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 best version of her has still has to be. I think it was CCH Pounder in the Justice League animated series. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just well, such Pounder, a right? voice to, to stand up to Batman and just. I mean, I met her at a convention and she had a photo of her as Amanda Waller, her face next to the animated Amanda Waller, and mm. I was just like, oh my god, that is your best role. And she's she was she was you know she she was you know you know gushing with gratitude over me telling her that that playing Amanda Waller, in my opinion, is her best role. Well, she's she's a tremendous artist, and uh, when I was originally, uh, I had no voice in terms of casting. Let me make that clear right off. But right. you had asked me who uh, who I would have cast, 
uh, both Viola Davis and, uh, and Ms. Pounder would have been uh, right there, right there, because right. Uh, both are tremendous actresses, uh, are physically right for the roles. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted someone who would have that kind of authority. I remember right. uh, Ms. Pounder from, uh, from The Shield, and she had that kind of both strength and moral authority too in that show. Mm-hmm. So, so that was something that I think certainly plays into who I think Amanda is. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, what did you think of the, the portrayal in the most recent Suicide Squad movie where her character, uh, and I know this takes a lot from the comics, but this is the first time it's really been shown on uh, TV or, or, or the movies where her determination, she would kill anybody to get her job done. Uh, yeah. they even mentioned in movies, you know, you kill kids and, you know, she, she said she'd do anything. Um, yeah, uh, 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 she says, you don't know half of what I've, what I've done. Yep. Um, I can see you know, where they're going or where that, where that came from. She's also like that in, in the first suicide squad movie where uh, she just shoots a bunch of, uh, of operatives in the back because they didn't have high enough clearance. Um, and which was cold. That's not what I would have written. Okay. But I certainly understand why they're doing it that way and, Mm. and their choices with it. And Ms. Davis plays that to a fairly well. I mean, they make her really frightening. You know, she's uh, out of this gang of, of, of people, you know, she's, she's the hardest, maybe the nastiest of them all. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they would take it wrong that I said so. Um, so, and I and I can see how that's a choice to be made. I I never thought of, of Amanda as quite that bad myself. I, mean, I liked Amanda, you know. Mm. But then again, I had to write her a lot. So, uh, why why did the uh, why did the book end? I mean, was it just sales? The death of Superman yeah. and, and Batman's bank breaking of his back had just happened at around that issue sixty six. Yeah. No, it was uh, our sales were declining, and they felt also you know it, it gets to a point with a lot of books that unless you know it's a Superman book or Batman or Wonder Woman, you know like there there comes a point where they go, well, okay, um, it's either it may be declining, it may not just be growing either, it just may be flatlining, and they say, well, the town can be used better elsewhere, so uh, it. It happens to most books at some point. I think that's how often has the squad been canceled uh, since then as well. You know, like uh, they, I mean, they restarted every five minutes. We're on volume. Uh, I could probably look on Wikipedia. Seven. Tell me. Yeah. So, six, like, well, seven. And then six, unless you count the seven. miniseries Get Joker, um, which yeah. is like its own thing over here. The main book is here. Let's do Get Joker over here in the black like, label. We can be violent. We can show nudity. They showed the bat dick, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So also they have, uh, are they doing like one-offs or spinoffs? I know ju- they just did a Suicide Squad, King Shark. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they're doing a King, Tim Seeley, who's coming up on the show on Tuesday. Everybody uh, check it hey. out. Uh, <laughs> Tim Seeley is doing a uh, King Shark miniseries, which is from the perspective of King Shark in <laughs> while working in the Suicide Squad, <laughs> uh, which, uh, you know, it's funny because... Over in the regular Suicide Squad book that's currently being run by Peacemaker, Superboy is in that book, and King Shark came from Superboy's comic book in the 90s, mm-hmm. um, followed by Watery Grave Three-Parter, which was my first introduction to the Suicide Squad. I was too young to read your book, John, until I was much older, but I was you know, 14 or 15 when Superboy was debuting on the scene, um, or 13 or 14, and uh, they show up in Watery Grave Part 1, 2, and 3. Now, that King Shark and those three Watery Grave issues, whew, go on eBay. Wow. <laughs> so, 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 John, I had one question. Well, I, I have many questions, but I'm going to space them out because we have so much time now. Um, uh, and great, and that question is gone. Crap. Give me a second. All right, back. I got a question. Go, John, go, Chris, go, go. Uh, Leo, did you see the movie? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay. Did did you did you see where John's cameo in the movie was? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Were you in the? You weren't in the first one, right? You weren't in the one for 2016. No. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Although my name was. Yes. Uh, yes. Which is great because yeah. I mean, you know, I've I've heard creators complaining. You couldn't even get my name spelled correctly. Did nobody look online? Even on Wikipedia, they could spell it correctly. So that that was good that you got your name in the credits for that one. But the uh, man, oh, the, you know, the, when James Gunn puts that first trailer out there with the, which has the actors morphing into their comic book version, the comic book version morph, morphs into them or whatever, I was immediately thinking of your book being like, wow, somebody paid attention. This looks just like the comic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, James Gunn knows and loves uh, the squad. Uh, when he came over to DC, they offered him literally anything. Superman. Anything he wanted to yeah. do. Superman. Uh, do you want to do the next Man of Steel? He said, oh, I want to do Suicide Squad. And they said, okay. And then he said, and I want to do anything I want to do in it. And they said, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and so he was very pleased. You know, like he got ba basically carte blanche to kill who he wanted to, to, to put in. Oh, my God. He uh, yeah. Violence that he wanted to in the gore. You know, like, uh, it's a really James Gunn film and all the better for it. Mm -hmm. Right, and they use your logo too, which is great. I mean, not, I mean, you're, you're the, you know, what I mean, the logo from your book. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now I remember my question, though. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I remember in from reading uh, parts of your book, you know, that you were the one who really instilled that 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 Amanda Waller was always in touch with whomever was the president. Like when you first mm -hmm. started, I believe it was George W. Bush and. Oh, Reagan. Reagan. Oh, Reagan. Reagan. Sorry. Reagan. And then it was Bush. And then my bad. Sorry. Thank you, Chris. Um, or thank you, John. Either one, you know. Yeah, it was in the it was in Legends, Reagan, and, and okay. Reagan was still president by uh, Suicide Squad number one. Okay, cool. So because one of my favorite moments is when you had it was George W. Bush, um, the the father, and he was he was talking to Waller, and he I remember he was just going through things. It was in one page. But she got put in her place by him, and I was like, "Wow!" Mm -hmm. Like it, it was just so strange to me to see Amanda Waller, who you know, the wall, being mm -hmm. uh, put in the place by a president. And I'm just thinking, like, this is someone who's literally, like, she has orchestrated like hostile takedowns of, of criminals and teams and whatnot. If she mm -hmm. literally wanted you dead, she could make it happen. Mm -hmm. I wanted. So, what kind of like? Like and especially on top of it, like from what I understood of, of Bush, it was, it was just so in his character. Like I could literally hear his mm -hmm. voice saying the lines mm -hmm. and everything. Like what uh, what made you tie it so close to the politics? Uh, we we did that throughout the run. I think you know uh, mm -hmm. there's always a strong politic uh, uh, edge to it. There's um, international incidents. Um, there's one mm -hmm. point where I was. We, another source was was the newspaper and and magazines just to see what's going on in the world and right. then to see where I thought it might be in about eight months, which would be when uh, the book would be published. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there was a friend who called me up at one point and uh, said, "John, I'm planning my vacation." For uh, for next summer around this time, uh, where are you sending the squad at that point? Because I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's kind of like a wall <laughs> And uh, so I told her she went somewhere else. <laughs> we're the bad. We're the most evil, most vilest drug lords. Oh, John, what about him in the Suicide Squad? Okay, let's not go there. Can you imagine? And I guarantee somebody at DC wants to do this right now. They want to send the suicides. You know how we haven't dealt with like real world politics regarding oh, real God, nations in this. comics in a very long time. And mm -hmm. um, you know, once upon a time, they would send like Captain America to go fight Hitler in the comic while World yeah. War One was happening. I guarantee somebody at DC Comics wants to take the Suicide Squad and send them over to Afghanistan or Iraq or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you remember when like they did the whole thing with the Ayatollah and the uh, death of uh, Robin storyline? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, actually, yeah. my most recent, uh, the last miniseries that I did for the Squad, or actually, it wasn't a miniseries. I think it was a special. And uh, basically, they have this guy who has been kidnapped. Uh, this high 
American official who's been uh, kidnapped and brought to The Hague to stand trial for, for war crimes. And the squad is sent to, to bring mm-hmm. him back. Well, that's Cheney. You know, uh, oh. uh, he, he looks a bit like Cheney. No he God. talks a bit like Cheney. Also Rumsfeld. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and so the squad's assignment is to invade The Hague, who are their allies in Belgium, you know, uh, uh, mm-hmm. the whole European Union are supposed to be our allies. So we're invading our allies to right. get back, you know, like a guy who is a war criminal. You know, it's just funny that back in your, your time running it, they would show Reagan's face fully, yeah. you know what I mean? They would draw him as, as cool as they can. Nowadays, you know, even like Obama or Trump or whoever the president has been, it's in shadow. You know what I mean? They're like, it's oh, a face, oh, yeah. Was, you can kind of see their hands. Oh, you can kind of tell it's Trump. Oh, you can kind of tell it's Obama. But we won't just show their face unless we're, you know, he's hanging out with Spider Man or something. I'm like, stop doing that. I mean, they're public yeah. figures. Just put them in the comic book. Well, yeah, because, but no, I, yeah, there is a business reason behind it. They, yeah, you know, um, uh, they've gotten a little bit more conservative again, and they don't want to alienate potential readers who might also be fans of a given president, be it. Um, Bush uh, or or Obama, so um, uh, they don't want to take that risk, mm. uh, and I can understand it as a as a business decision. Mm. But I I like to do it, so I did it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I mean, come on, we're talking about the same company. Then instead of putting George Bush in office, we we elected Lex Luthor. So <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, that to me was I was like, boy, that's the biggest kind of middle finger that you can think of right there. Cause I was like, we're going to elect a fictional person instead of have yeah. you in the office. And he's, he's a super villain. He's horrible. Yeah. He's a, yeah. you know, um, so another question well, I want to ask you, uh, well, John, work was, you yeah, there you go. Uh, is that before you, like when you were early in the comics or whatnot, before you entered the industry, you had a supporting character named after you in um, the, I believe it was the daring new adventures of Supergirl. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, Paul Kupperberg, who was writing, lived across the street from me in Chicago. And uh, I think it's, they even named the same street, Fargo. And uh, he knew I was an actor type and loved comics. And this was before I started writing mm-hmm. comics. So he decided to make me a character in it. Uh, and Johnny Ostrander was kind of a feckless uh, would be actor, uh, and uh, so there. Was, and shortly after he showed up in in Supergirl, after I became a supporting character there, uh, I started actually writing books. So eventually, awesome. my supporting character disappeared. I think the whole book disappeared eventually. You um, well, on, on uh, actually, just real quick on that same yeah, sure. note. Um, so. One thing I read is that uh, a lot of people think that you killed Grant Morrison, uh, wrote him into <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad number 58. Uh, hmm. How, how, how true is that? Killing I could undo it would probably be that one. Um, Grant was never named. It was just somebody called the writer. And yes. I did it to poke some fun. You know, like, uh, Grant had written himself into the end of Animal Man. So I said, okay, now he's a DC character. And DC characters are open to me. So I'll put him into the Suicide Squad and kill him off. That way he doesn't have to worry about about how he'll be used elsewhere. But yeah, no, I don't think, from what I've heard, Grant didn't take it too well. You know, uh, and no, I shouldn't have done it. It was not very professional. It was kind of fun, but you know, if I had choice to do it again, I wouldn't. <laughs> Guys, we've oh, interviewed the there. man who killed Grant Morrison. How great is this? <laughs> it's that that should be the name of a movie, Drew. Like uh, the man who killed Don Quixote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, John, you you're during Suicide Squad. We are introduced for the first time to Oracle, and it's Barbara Gordon. Yeah. Um, she's back to being Oracle again because DC was like, do we need to go back and do that again? And we'll come up with a way. Oh, the chip doesn't work. She needs to sit down. Great. Okay. You know, we got our, we got our Oracle. And we have our Batgirl. They're two separate people, but you're, 
you were the first one to write that. What Did you always plan to use Barbara Gordon and involve her into this tech whiz character, or was there somebody else in mind? No. No, we weren't. Uh, uh, Oracle was something that Kim Yale, my late wife, and I, and yes. Kim was writing the book with me at the time. And uh, Manhunter, right? Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, so, uh, and here too, I don't want to feel like I'm bashing on anybody, but we, Please. while while the Killing Joke is a very impressive piece of work, and I think the world, uh, Alan Moore, you really can't get better in terms of writing for comics, or maybe just uh, writing. He's a he's a fantastic writer, Brian Bottle. How could you not, you know, yeah. love just about everything he does? Mm -hmm. But we had problems with it and with the way the barber was treated in it. Um, she gets. Um, there's a knock at Commissioner Gordon's apartment door. And she goes running to it giggling. Uh, what drove us nuts was there was no peephole on it. There was no chain on the door or any other safety devices. And there was no, and there were no guards. This is Gotham freaking city. Uh, oh, I forgot this is mature Gotham fucking city. And, uh, so would the commissioner of police not have any guards on his door or on his apartment? But no, she goes running, giggling to it, and then opens it, and there's the Joker. And he takes a big fucking gun and shoots her. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Uh, uh, and They just the, revisited that, by the way, in uh, recent issues of Batman. Um, they just brought back the continuity of the killing joke. Oh, Okay. Joker, right. the Joker series right now, Joker um, goes to Gordon and is just like, hey, remember what I did to your daughter? So oh, does the audience. And, and, <laughs> and also, John, just to let you know, it's still, it's, I mean, it's still a great story. I mean, I, I own a first printing and it's amazing, yeah. but it's still problems. I mean, I even made a meme off of it and I showed it to a few people. People are like, this is funny, but you cannot show this to everybody because people are still wishy-washy about the content. And yeah. I wonder, uh, yeah, you know, somebody in this chat had similar sentiments like that. I wonder who, because that wasn't Leo. Uh, <laughs> part of the whole uh, woman in refrigerators. The, the the Robin one, the Robin one, Drew is so much funnier. Well, I know, but it's just, but I didn't create that one. Okay, oh, I, I'm, oh, okay. I'm expecting you to to back me up because we work together. But no, I, I couldn't do that. So point I, being, I, that, I, I, I was just like, I I, I get the humor, <laughs> you know, humor. I know, but this is. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I agree with you, John. It, it, it's a great story, but I can see why some people even then were like, this is intense. And, and the fact that Alan apologized for it later, right. simply, and it was, he, he backed his work up, but he was just like, he didn't like what it kind of ushered in, right? Yeah, yeah and so uh, we knew that the Batman ops really had no further intentions for using Barbara at all. Oh. Uh, I mean, maybe as a very background character, but uh, her days as an active character in the DC was really over. Right. So we asked for her, and they said, okay, we aren't going to use her. And mm -hmm. we decided, okay, our rules were, um, given the angle of the shot that you see, actually, technically, she should be dead. Uh, but uh, uh, infection, at the very least, would have set in that would have, you know, taking her life but mm -hmm. since she wasn't uh our thing was she's crippled and she's going to remain crippled we're not going to magically cure her you know what we want is for her to be in a wheelchair okay and since she was no longer she couldn't be that girl or that sort of hero mm -hmm. we also uh again talking about continuity part of barbara's convoluted continuity was at one point she was a computer whiz so we said okay let's take her and make her a hub in terms of information. She'll have mm -hmm. these massive computers. She has all these mad computer uh, skills. And we said, if we do her right, a lot of other writers are going to want to use her because she solves a, a big plot problem. Uh, anytime uh, somebody in another book needs to find out something, well, okay, you got to explain how they did it, maybe show how they did it. You know, mm -hmm. in this case, they could simply call up Oracle, she'd find the answer real quick and they could go on and beat somebody up. 
uh, which is a lot simpler for, for a lot of writers. And we were right. She became very popular for that reason with mm -hmm. other writers. And she became a, actually a mainstay of the, of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. And um, also the, um, uh, the challenge, the physically challenged community, uh, people who, who are in wheelchairs, who are, who have other things, uh, they found someone who looked like them, someone who acted like them, someone mm -hmm. who faced it, uh, many of the same ch uh, challenges. When mm -hmm. we did um, uh, the year one for her in Batman Chronicles, uh, Kim insisted that we take out a page and showing how when she left the hospital and she's being taken home by her father, we spent a full page showing how difficult it was for her to get out of her wheelchair and into the back seat of the car. Something that you know, like all of us who are abled um, just take for granted. You know, you could just get open the earth, slide in. But right. it, that's not easy when you when you have that problem, when you mm -hmm. have those uh, physical difficulties. Right. And we got lots of uh, response from that community about that because A, it was accurate, and B, we weren't ignoring it. We weren't ignoring them. We weren't ignoring the difficulties of their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barbara Gordon as Oracle actually went on, and I think at the time, certainly she was she was a better character and more interesting as Oracle than she had been as Batgirl up to that point. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not taking anything away from, from Gail Simone, who I love, and I think is a wonderful mm -hmm. writer when, when mm -hmm. she did Batgirl, uh, and others who, did, who have done Batgirl. Uh, mm. Barbara's writers very well written, uh, but I think that up until that happened, you know, like she was a more effective character as Oracle, and um, also it was fun the way that we introduced her. Is uh, we introduced her gradually, so it was a couple months before you realized that Oracle was in fact Barbara Gordon, and that added something to it as well. I think. Oh, oh, I had a, I had a, I had a question. Oh, oh, I hear an echo. Yes, I was about to say, like, are there more people on this chat than I realized? It's the ghost of everyone John killed off. Oh, that's, <laughs> a lot of, that's a lot of bodies. <laughs> I know. I, I wonder, uh, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, you went to a galaxy far, far away for a little while in Dark Horse Comics with uh, wow. Star Wars Legacy. I. I freaking loved Star Wars Legacy. I thought it was such a bold attempt to do something so far away from continuity. But in the future, whereas everyone always keeps going into the past, um, talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, I was doing some work for uh, for Dark Horse at the time in Star Wars, uh, along with Jan Dersma, who is my artist. And we were doing, um, actually at that point, we were doing the Clone Wars. Um, uh, uh, that section, and along with the characters that we had created, Quinlan Boss, and actually a whole bunch of characters. What uh, what I tried to suggest to Dark Horse when I came on writing is at the time they had um, it was a rotating thing where you you would have a different team of writers and artists coming in, and um, I suggested to them a first of all have your own characters rather than sticking strictly with the characters uh, from from the films, because you can't control those. You have no control of them. You can tell a story with them, but you uh, but certainly <laughs> can't put them in peril. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and then secondly, I said, uh, look, whether it's me and Jan or some other team, have a regular team on there, because they will, uh, uh, if they're popular with the fans, they will draw fans in on a regular basis. And the number of people reading the book won't be contingent upon uh, 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 who is doing the book or what the story might be. You know, you know uh, the fans like a certain amount of consistency mm -hmm. they can trust on a monthly basis. And that's what keeps them there, I think, or one of the things that keeps them there. So um, anyways, it was drawing to a close. Uh, the uh, three prequel films were done. Uh, uh, and it uh, didn't look like they were going to be doing anything more. Uh, so our time in that era was done. And um, I uh, 
see, I'm with you, Chris. I don't want to go back. I want to know, you know, like my storytelling thing, me as a reader, what I want to know is, yeah, what happened next? And mm -hmm. then what happened? So uh, that's what I was interested in. And we and Jan and I talked and talked it over, and we proposed, you know, just drop kicking it down the timeline right. to to another era, you know, building and using elements of the continuity so that people would know it's Star Wars, but sort of developing it further. If this happened, what would be likely to happen next, or given this situation, uh, or given this character, then what happens? Mm. And so that's how we started to develop it for our main. We wanted a Skywalker, certainly. Uh, uh, and Skywalker should have a lightsaber. You know. So we had Cade Skywalker, who is son of grandson, I think we made it, of, uh, of Luke. Yeah. And, um, and our basic thing was, okay, let's make him Han, Han Solo with a, with a lightsaber. You know, make him scruffy, make him roguish make him mm -hmm. nice. make him a jackass yeah 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 basically he's not a nice character he's like i mean he's like he he i mean for god's sake he dates like a sith lord this thing what i forget her name darth talon was that it yeah darth i think talon. so yeah mm -hmm. one of the most popular by the way cosplays of yeah. all time it's yeah. true <laughs> yeah yeah i got uh, uh just a side uh thing i was at a uh, star wars can be one of the big star wars conventions and mm -hmm. a lot of people in cosplay and there was really a stunning young woman uh dressed as darth talon uh, and she was around the dark horse booth i waited until the crowd thinned out and i came up and smiled at her and said hi i'm your daddy and she went what and i said I created the character that you're doing. She went, oh, you're so cute. Oh, oh my God. That's fantastic. I'm so, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then they posted for, for photographs with me. Uh, by the way, you know you've reached a certain age when the attractive young girls go, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> that that well, is uh, just the best. Uh, on, on a similar vein, not, not being a... a daddy but for, for star wars stories um what was your reaction when disney went and said okay we're gonna cut off the continuity here and you know everything before that is considered you know legacy or or you know non-canon uh but now they're picking and choosing items to bring back into continuity damn it leo i had the same question sorry no it's yeah. fine just go yeah i don't care <laughs> I honestly don't care. You know, like, uh, I don't own the property. I don't control the continuity. The, the work Dan and I did is still out there. In fact, uh, uh, Marvel is reprinting a lot of it. I now get royalties from that. So, so that's that's fine by me. But I, I don't own the characters. It's out there. Is, is it continuity? Is it not? We were lucky it was ever part of the continuity. <laughs> uh, out of your works, is there something that you would like them to bring back in? uh into say like the animated universe or or um they're working on multiple movies now or additional movies disney uh, will never let darth talon appear in anything without altering that costume leo are you kidding they banned uh Slender no, no, leo. i i'm i'm not saying exactly but you know is there <laughs> i'm just saying is there any anything oh, you would like them to to bring back yeah uh yeah actually there's a series that i didn't do with jan Called called Agent of the Empire, which uh, yes, which I sold, which I sold uh, to uh, Randy Stradley, who was the editor, asked me if I had anything else in the Star Wars universe. I said, "Star Wars meets James Bond," and Genius. from there, it's like simple. Uh, he has to work for the Empire because that's the thing that that would correlate to uh, uh, James Bond. But at the same time, he does. He's not necessarily evil. He, uh, he just doesn't know the truth behind all of it. And at one point I was going to have him uh, find out the truth uh, and have to deal with that. But uh, I think that uh, that character would make a very interesting character uh, for
for uh, film, TV, animation, whatever they wanted to do. Mm. Nice. What is a character you never got to write that you always wanted to? Because you, when uh, when you went to Marvel, you worked a lot in the X universe, which is great. But uh, even and it doesn't have to be Marvel and it doesn't have to be DC. Uh, is there somebody that you were like, I, I wanted to write him. I wanted to do a, a series. I have an idea for a story. You don't have to tell us what the story is, of course. But well, um, I do have a Han Solo miniseries uh in the back of my head it's at the D disney right now <laughs> oh, uh, shut up and take this money uh, I like, uh, i've always wanted like to a suicide squad favorite. han solo story no no, <laughs> no, I, no I can tell you when it's set it's set um it starts off at the ice planned hoth so it's between uh episodes uh uh three and four four and five, four and five. Yeah, yeah it's empire it's hoth yeah yeah, Empire Strikes Back. So it, so it happens before Empire Strikes Back. Oh, so between three and four. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm, whatever. No, four and five. No, Math. four and five. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Math. Sorry. But uh, Damn, you're going to lose your nerd credit if you don't get it. Oh, my it. God. You're right. Oh, my God. I keep saying Revenge of the Sith. Oh, jeez. I mean, One more mistake. We're taking a comic. I mean, I, I, I suddenly heard of I have a sick emotion in the force. As, a, as 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 though a thousand fans were screaming. I know. Them. Yes. I'm sorry. So, um, <laughs> love it. What was the question? I I, I no, I mean, it's okay. We got distracted. Wait, wait, wait. You want to do. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about your hand solo story. Oh yeah. Um, uh, simply, it would it would take place there, and it would be a solo, uh, so to speak, story. Um, uh, and I don't want to go too much into it because you know. I, if they hear it and like it, they say, "Well, what we need him for?" You know, they could do it. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, you always be careful as a writer. Don't tell your best ideas because you, they could end up with somebody. I mean, else. you must have a you must have like a literary person that could probably get you a line to Disney or Mar well, Marvel Publishing could, to be like, "Hey, John Ostrander wants to write a solo miniseries." I could probably get it there myself. You know, like, so yeah. So maybe I will. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I'm not, I would totally not like would buy that. Paperback. Most yeah. of the Star Wars, because they're putting out so much Star Wars content, and right now they have a 34 freaking part crossover for mm -hmm. War of the Bounty Hunters, which is like, are you freaking kidding me with this? I, I buy Star Wars Invader, and that's it. Everything else is like collected in trade paperback, or I read it digitally. It's just too much Star Wars stuff from Disney right now. Yeah. And Marvel, yeah. and 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 Delray, uh, the publishing house that puts out the books, mm -hmm. it's like hard to keep up with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, they did something like that with uh, when they're doing the Yuuzhan Vong War as, as well. They tried to do that in comics and the books and right. Uh, yeah, the uh, the new was... Jedi Order, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, I think even video games, if I recall correctly, as well. But. Uh, so, so yeah, I would like to do that. Uh, other characters that I might like to play with. Um, I've always liked Doctor Fate. I I like Doctor Strange. I like the Demon. You know, all these kind of Sweet. Uh, darker characters uh, uh, would be fun to play with. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can I can find something to do with almost. I could probably tell a fairly good Superman story. Now, Ooh. having mentioned Grant Morrison once, I'll mention him again, saying. He has done one of the best Superman stories that I ever read. So I don't know if the uh, All Star Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if mine would be so as good, great. As, but I think it's I so seen. good. And it was, and it was. Uh, they they turned it into a great. I, I, I thought a pretty decent animated movie. They cut out what they needed to cut out to fit for, fit it for time. Um, they yeah. could have do two films like they seem to be doing multi part storylines as two films these days. So if they ever yeah. redid that, I don't want them to. But uh, yeah, no, it is a great uh, film. Mm. Yeah, well, so it's a great film and miniseries. Oh, I should mention too. Uh, when you ask what I what would I like to do, this sort of brought me into Suicide Squad in the first place. Because uh, Bob Greenberger, Robert Greenberger, uh, who's my contact at DC and was going to be my my editor, uh, he and I had met at conventions, and I had been working over at First Comics, doing Grimjack and others. Uh, he said, um, "Well, what would you like to do if you came over to DC?" And I said, "Oh, I know a title that I'd love: Challengers of the Unknown, because that's one of the great titles in comics." 
challengers of the unknown. You know, you say, can't have it. Uh, somebody else has got dibs on it. He says, but, <laughs> but we got this other title appeared in the Brave and Bold for five issues back in the 50s. Nobody's doing anything with it. And uh, it's totally open. You can do anything you want with it. It's called Suicide Squad. And I said, what a stupid name. <laughs> you know, who in the right mind belongs to something that calls itself Suicide Squad? And from there, I figured out who might be the people who would. And prisoners. And prisoner, And in DCU, that means supervillains. Now we're talking fun. And if you and I had watched uh, the Dirty Dozen, relatively uh, recently before that, Dirty Dozen with supervillains, and maybe a touch of Mission Impossible. Now we got something, you know. Uh, I just watched Magnificent Seven again recently, and that too, you know, it involves you with characters and then kills them off, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, uh, so there's a tradition of that uh, uh, within storytelling. And I just watched. Um I haven't watched it, I think, since it was in theaters, um, connected to Suicide Squad, because Idris Elba is in both, as well as Captain America. He's, he's in this movie, or Chris Evans. Uh, the Losers, Losers movie, also based yeah. on a Vertigo comic book, also based on a DC property. I yeah. was just like, this movie needs all the attention, because it's got the actor who plays the comedian, the actor who plays Captain America, the actor who plays Bloodsport, the actress who plays uh, Gamora. You know, this is a comic book movie filled with comic book other property actors. You know, yeah. Andrew Sebel is also uh, Hemdale, Thor, the Thor films. And I was just like, this does not get the recognition it deserves. This needs really as much recognition as the Suicide Squad. I, I don't, I think when it came out, the marketing wasn't really. It wasn't good. No, wasn't no. Good. And we didn't have the glutton of Marvel films just yet. They were starting with Iron Man. So that mm -hmm. had started, but we it wasn't it wasn't like the way it is now, where it's just like Marvel's putting out four films a year and DC's putting out four films a year. Well, In fact, they're putting out, what, five films next year? Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, I, I get that. But, you know, uh, being a geek like we all are, you know, or a dork or, or whatnot. Whatever uh, works. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I didn't even hear about the movie until just uh, like about a year and a half ago. I mean, just it, well, it, keep in mind, you know, like also when Losers came out, it's, it's at a time when uh, the studios would make comic book movies but apologize for them. You know, it's like, yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't until really, I mean, certainly, uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight trilogy had got respect. But then when Kevin Feige came out and started really you know, uh, doing this with the Marvel films and making them all a single entity and uh, doing them so well and getting such good people to do them, uh, cast, directors, everything, you know, uh, they were taking it seriously, and which brings us back to James Gunn. Uh, he did Guardians of the Galaxy, took the property ser seriously, but did things with it. And he mm -hmm. did the same thing with Suicide Squad. You know, like, you know he loves, you know, like, I mean, he himself, yeah, yeah, he's got a bit of a nerd in him. And yeah. So, uh, and he got to do Superman in a way with that uh, um, Bright, Brightburn or whatever it was. Brightburn. Yeah, Brightburn. That was basically... Superman. I mean, that, that is that is straight evil up Superman. Superman. It's dark Superman. It's the evil Superman people complain about who are hardcore Superman fans. Um, you know, and of course now we're getting Injustice, the animated movie, which is gonna, you know, I'm sure that's gonna be as divisive as anything like Homelander or or um, uh, who's Invincible's father? I forgot his name. Omni Man. Omni Man. So. Well, it is um, that they keep on reusing the evil Superman, and you know it, it's it's been a while since we've seen you know on on uh, video anyway, you know what Superman's supposed to be, you know a blue Boy Scout, you know. It, yeah. it's, uh, you well, know. the thing about Superman that uh, I always felt was that uh, he has these tremendous powers. Um, he's invulnerable physically, but what about emotionally? You know, and I think that's where the key lies, you know, is mm -hmm. that uh, 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 how does he feel? You know, uh, also, what about the burden of being Superman? Right. And what about, you know, you know, you have all these powers and you could do a lot. You could change a lot of things in the world, but maybe only by taking charge. How much of a temptation is there for him to do that? You right, know, right. I mean, and, and, and Kingdom Come explored that. Like, okay, Lois died. Superman just went away. 
Yeah. He went he 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 went and mowed a farm, you know, and, and that's a lot of more hardcore really, you know, more a, a lot of the Superman fans that I that I, I love their opinions about the character Back say that's really what Superman would do. Lois dies, Superman would just go away. He he wouldn't be like, Oh, I have to take it out on the planet and show everyone why I'm you know, mm. Homelander and Omni Man. Mm. No, he would like go away. He'd be like I'm done. The love of my life is dead. My parents are dead. I got nothing. Goodbye. Well, everybody I handles humanity. Yeah, it's uh, everybody handles grief in their own way, and it could be taken either way. You know, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying that you know anyone who had a that type of situation as Superman is, but we're just we're, we're talking about the fictional character of Superman. I love the way Mark R Wade wrote it, where Superman was just like, okay. This is the way you want to be. This is the way you're going to be. You can be led by the Punisher. I'm going away. <laughs> so I, I did have one question. Well, I again still have a few, but uh, you know I want to give right. others their time. Too. Um, no, no, it's fine. So, I was just about yeah, to ask if yeah, anyone had any more questions. Oh yeah. Time. So um, yeah, John. So the question is that you you were at DC at a time where you know writers are coming up with these ideas, not knowing that they would be maybe uh, a best-selling story or something influential. You know, so perhaps you sat at lunches with other writers and you bounced off ideas. Was there ever like a conversation you had? Like I, I remember uh, I was reading a foreword in uh, in the collection of Alan Moore and Klaus Janssen was talking about how he was just sitting in at lunch and him and uh, him, Alan Moore and Frank Miller are all eating lunch and they're bouncing off ideas each other. It was it was amazing. Were you ever part of like a conversation where maybe like they discussed something that became huge or you made a suggestion and then that became, and then that became big, like, you know, like conversations that, like that. I can't say that I was, you know, I, I, uh, if I was, then I've forgotten it. Um, uh, mm -hmm. The conversations I would have maybe is, is with the editors, you know, like of a respective, right. when I would talk to them about what I was doing or intended to do mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just to get their idea, their take on whether or not, it was okay to go ahead with it, right. but uh, I mean, I, I've met a lot of writers at different times, um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I admire you know a lot of people's work. You know, you mentioned mm -hmm. Mark Wade. I think you know, he's some remarkable work. Amazing, great yeah, person. So, but uh, no, I can't. Say, yeah. Don't forget, I did. I did most of my work at home. I would, uh, I rarely come right. into the city. Usually, mm -hmm. trying to cage one of my checks um, before they did uh, direct transfer, and um, mm -hmm. and sometimes to to maybe pitch something. But right. other than that, I wasn't around that much. Okay, so so you also said you brought up conventions and whatnot. So you really watched the evolution. I mean, they. I mean, I remember hearing about the first. San Diego Comic Con was in a cruddy hotel with Jack Kirby and and a few other people, and now it's it takes over a whole town for a weekend. Yeah. So I mean, you've been to more than a and convention. More on Hollywood than an actual the actual comic book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're not going to get into that because he'll be on for another hour, and we don't want to disrupt that. Um, so no, that's all I have to say it, about it. <laughs> yeah, but what but what is it like when you're at a con? And you know, you meet fans like us who we, we've read the work, we you know, and whatnot. But what is it like when you see the characters you helped write and, and evolve and you see them in, in cosplay? Like, how does that feel as a creator? You know, you're seeing someone, you're actually like in some way meeting, it almost feels like you're meeting the character for the first time. So it's kind of like that Darth Town, like, I'm your dad. Hi. Yeah. You know, you look great. Thank you. Can I get a photo with you? You know? Yeah. Um, well, uh, the early days when I was doing comic book conventions, there was no cosplay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's cosplay is something that a, I've enjoyed a lot since uh, since it started up. And I also think I think cosplay has been good for comic book conventions. I think it's uh, it's been it's a visual juice, you know. It's a uh, it pops things a bit, and you mm -hmm. see the characters walk around and they stop and take pictures with with the kids and. The kids can get all excited about it uh, as well. I've seen more kids as a result uh, at combo conventions, which I also think is very important because Agreed. really, I think if you don't get kids reading comics by the time they're 10 years old, you're not going to get them. 
Right. So, and uh, I prefer to have people reading comics. Thank you. So <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I think cosplay is a very good thing. Uh, there, there are people who, uh, who maybe don't feel as much as I do about it, but I, uh, I've met a couple of cosplayers, not just to say, who's your daddy, but, uh, <laughs> but, they're, but they're very dedicated mm -hmm. to the craft and their skill right. and their artistry. Uh, so uh, I like them a lot and I think they add a lot mm -hmm. to conventions, to the excitement. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, so John, the, it, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to chat with you. Drew and I have a project that I will privately message you about that I uh, hope you will be interested in sharing some insight about um, and I'll, I'll get with you. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a private message about that later on, but it's something you you may you may find very interesting and want to contribute uh, totally. to some information to us for. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's about creators and comics, but uh, certain types of creators, and I'll I'll explain it more in detail in, in private message. Okay, Very cool, cool. Um, John, do you have any? Uh, do you have a social media where fans can reach out to you? Do you have yeah. any conventions you're co going to be at coming up? That is a good uh, question. Um, I'm on Facebook too much. Um, Aren't we all? Yeah, agreed. I don't tweet. I I've never really gotten into Twitter. I mean, Do it. Stay I, away I'm, from Twitter. Thank you. Well, well it, it is just real quick uh, in the show notes. I put your Facebook and Twitter so people can follow you. But then you know I'm going through your Twitter and the, like your last tweet is like 2016. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facebook is yeah. the way he goes. You know. <laughs> yeah, or Instagram. I don't, I don't Instagram go there. Be, uh, safer than Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm not going to put it down. I just. I don't understand it very well. I don't. I don't really understand how to use you it. You and me both, sir. Yeah. No. no Twitter can be complicated. Okay. I, it took forever to get on it, and now I wish I wasn't. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, so I'm on Facebook, as I said, too much. Uh, uh, if you're going to, to drop by my page, get used to puns, because I do a lot of. Them. Oh my God! I need to get on your page. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if I don't leave my audience groaning. You know, um, Mary Mitchell, who is my my partner, um, she comes in, she'll look at my puns and then look at me and go, Arr. and I'll just laugh because if I get a groan out of her, then I know that's well, good. That's, that's, that's awesome. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely go follow him. Uh, I sent you a friend request, sir. And uh, I, Same. I, I was reading your stuff. Absolutely love it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know we are out of time, so we're going to wrap things up. Uh, okay. John, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this afternoon. So, uh, Facebook, do you also do Instagram or is it just Facebook? Nope. Just Facebook. Awesome. Just Facebook. I, I waste enough time as it is. Sounds good. I, I suppose at one man. point I may investigate Instagram, but the moment I do it, you'll probably die. It's, eh. Uh, Chris, where do you like people interacting with you? Uh, Radio Horror is a good place. No show tonight. This is Sunday night when I usually do the show, but the uh, the weather has basically just taken the show out of me. Uh, Splash Pages with you on Tuesday. We'll be there doing it, uh, covering Suicide Squad once again with Tim Seeley talking about the Suicide Squad, as well as other projects in the DC Pantheon and other things. But uh, uh show I do with you and Drew, the spectacular Sal Basema era podcast, and also my other uh, comic-related show, which is connected to Tim Seeley once again, uh, Goth Girl Horror, the Hack Slash podcast. I really got to read that. Very cool. It's 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 fun if you're a horror fan. <laughs> I am a horror fan, so that'll I'll, I'll add that to my list. All right. So, mm -hmm. uh, Drew. Oh right. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm places, and where you might find me. Um, there, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I work with Chris. He's wonderful. <laughs> I, st I still don't see what he sees in me because I feel like I can contribute nothing. Um, just ditcoing it for the ride. Uh, I'm. I work with him. I work with Leo. John, it's an honor. And uh, I feel like the awkward kid in the Brady Bunch. So, <laughs> yep, doing great. So you're Marsha. Yep, totally Marsha in it. Have Marcia a good one, kids. Marcia. Don't die. Yeah. Uh, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You'll find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but make sure you follow John. Uh, you know, you're going to love the stuff on his page. 
uh, read more comics like we all should. And uh, I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. Uh, we have about 40 shows on the network. A lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, matter of fact, these guys are on the network as well. So just follow everybody. Links are in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, for shows, I do Creator Spotlight. Tomorrow we have Scott Schwartz, which was uh, the little kid that got his uh, tongue stuck to a pole in uh, Christmas Story. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Triple dog dare him. Tuesday, we have Tim Seeley. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to be talking to D. Wallace on Token with the Dead. Oh, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, and there was uh, something else this week, uh, but my mind is absolutely blown. I do too many shows. Uh, with that, we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Yep. Drew, Leo, hold on real quick. We'll yep. talk about yep. Spider-Man. John, you, 